Good day everyone, so let's discuss whether Kokomi suffers from split scaling. A very common misconception about this character is, is that you have to trade off HP and attack against one another in order to do more damage, and that's completely wrong. So if you don't know what split scaling is, let's just look at these two values, her max HP and her attack. You can see my attack is 1257 and our max HP is about 40k, uh, 40k 608. So if we go to her talents, you will see that her normal attacks all scale off of her base attack. In other words, the value that says 1257. And her jellyfish, um, when it does its ripple damage, that also scales off of her normal attack. So the big thing now is that when we get into her ultimate, we use the normal attack values as base, like base damage but then we add an additional attack bonus based off of her max HP to this value. So what you can see is from her 40k we're going to now take 8.2% and then we will just add that in into the normal like attack string. And that is what people would refer to as split scaling because on the one hand if you increase attack more you'll do more damage during your ultimate but if you increase HP more you also do more damage, but if you increase the one, you're also sort of trading it off against the other one. And a lot of people say, well, this is problematic about the character, and therefore Mihoyo is designed a bad character, book a case closed, end of it. But that's not true. So what I'm going to do in the interest of complete and full transparency is I'll show you a couple of videos, I'll show you all the damage numbers, we'll go through all the calculations in detail, and you'll be quite surprised to know that no, she doesn't suffer from split scaling at all. So how would we test this? Well, that's quite simple. All we're going to do is we're going to take a Kujo Serra, we're going to use her ability, we're going to quickly buff Kokomi's attack to 1929, and if the split scaling hypothesis is true and this character suffers from it, then by increasing her attack like we did now by 53%, we should see a massive difference. But we're not going to see that massive difference. So. What I'm going to do, again, in the interest of full transparency, is show you her normal attacks right here. There you go. There you can see the normal attack string. So you can use these same numbers, verify these numbers. I'm gonna, now going to go into my ultimate burst, and we're just going to wait for her C6 to kick in after like the initial damage. And now you can use these numbers that you see on screen. So this is without any attack buff. This is typically what my Kokomi is doing. And this is ignoring the jellyfish damage. Um, what I'm also now going to do is use the Raiden Shogun on screen. I'm just going to quickly charge her ult up. No fishiness, nothing trickery. You can see it's pretty transparent. And Kokomi's ultimate should be up right now. There we go. So now we're just going to let the video play out. And just wait for Masanori to be in a good position for us to demonstrate what we need to do. And it should be about at this point. Now we're going to go into our ultimate. So, okay, so we're first going to buff it. And now we've got a buffed ultimate attack. Ignore the first string, now C6 kicks in, and there we go. There you can see the numbers on screen from using Kujo Sara to buff the attack. And that's about it. Um, I did forget in this example to show you her normal attacks and um, with the buff. So you can see it in this next video. Uh, this is just her normal attacks with the buff. There are all the numbers. Pretty transparent. So those are the numbers that I'm going to use right here. You can verify for yourself that I'm not cheating. So clearly, 672 is a 53% damage increase from 1,200 to 1,900. And her normal attacks about every 1.5 seconds, you can see without the attack buff, is 6,510 on my Kokomi build. And then when we are in her ultimate, if you look at these numbers you can, on screen here, um, including the C1, and I'll remove the C1 later, uh, she does about 46,200 damage every 1.5 seconds. Now, with the attack buff, her normal attacks increase in values, like you can see on screen, and that gives you from 6,510, that bumps her normal attacks up to about 8,319, which is a 27% increase in damage. And her ultimate, including the C1, um, if you add in all these values, you will see we're now only doing about 48,416, or like a 4.7% increase in damage. And you can see, I'm sort of showing you here that the biggest um, sort of buff, or damage buff, 
uh, from attack, from boosting her attack, um, influences her normal attacks. And you can see on screen, like each one of the attacks in the attack sequence, particularly the third attack, gets the highest increase by 31%. Uh, during her ult, however, the increase is pretty negligible uh, compared to the HP percentage. And if we, you can see I've just sort of checked all the maths, um, so I didn't lie to myself either. And if we now took, if we ignore C1, because C1 doesn't depend on attack buff, so it doesn't matter what your attack is, C1 scales purely off of HP, um, which is very interesting, because if you're pulling for Kokomi and getting higher constellations, attack buffs mean actually less. But ignoring C1, if we take the ratio of the normal damage she deals relative to the damage during her ultimate, you get about a 1 to 5 ratio, or like um, her normal attacks deal about 19% of the damage. So it's like the 80-20 rule almost. Normal attacks do 20%, ultimates does 80%. Uh, with the buffed attack, this changes to about a 23%, uh, or a 1 to a 4.3. And basically, uh, like sort of type of ratio, so you can almost think of it in in a certain sense that um, it's yeah. I know how to sort of put it like I have the twenty eighty rule, but here it's like it's 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 not really that impressive to be honest, because we just sort of moved from nineteen point three percent to twenty three point two percent, but that's just because the majority of the damage affects our normal attacks and not our ultimate. So effectively what this means is, is that even by increasing our attack by 53%, uh, our normals, um, like we only get like roughly half that benefit on our normal attacks and our ultimate really doesn't get any significant benefit whatsoever. And so effectively what this means and the big takeaway is, is that the HP scaling on, Co on Kokomi dominates her attack scaling by quite a significant factor. This means split scaling is not a significant issue. When is it a significant issue? It's when you, when it's when you would have had like a ratio which would have been closer to like one to two, or I would even say one to three. But the moment we're now at a one to five ratio, um, you can really then ask yourself a very simplistic question. I'm just going. Am I going to use Kujo Sara to buff Kokomi's attacks? Or am I going to use her buff to buff Raiden Shogun or Ayaka? I think the answer is pretty simple. And you, you're going to buff your main DPS. You're not going to use Kokomi's normal attacks as in almost ever. You're going to use her ultimate. So why on earth is split scaling a problem with this character? Particularly if you understand that this character is a support. She's not the main damage dealer. So all the attack buffs are going to go to your main and your sub DPS, not your support your, or your healer. So split scaling is really not a problem. Otherwise, the numbers would have really shown it. I really would have expected like 33 to 66 or like 50-50, uh, like split between the two. But we don't see that. We see that the majority of the damage is in an elemental burst, which scales off of HP. And the higher up you go in terms of constellations, you can see a C1 doesn't scale off of attack. So attack so the more damage we're going to start doing the less attack becomes relevant so if we just look at our constellation c1 doesn't benefit off of attack c2 scales off of max hp uh, c3 scales off of max hp c4 allows you to do more damage um, so attack normal attack speeds increase and resource energy for her but during her ultimate her normal attack speeds increase so this scales off of max HP. Um, Bake Karage is the only one of uh, Karage, <laughs> what on earth did I say just now? Uh, Karage is the only one that scales uh, that has the dual scaling so it's only really C5 that gives you a tiny bit of like sort of like you know argument in favor of attack but uh, the regeneration scales off of HP and the last one gives you a hydro damage percent bonus and that is irrespective of your HP, um, your attack or your HP percentage in fact, by getting more, since I've proven to you now that HP matters way more, this Hydro damage is going to increase a lot more with HP scaling than attack scaling. So overall, her constellations suggest and the maths suggest that HP is the most important thing. And her passive talents also suggest that the proper way to build her 
with the HP, Hydro Damage Bonus, and then Healing Damage Bonus, because this gives you additional flat um, attack in effect, and then that also then translates to more damage that you can do. So what are the ultimate conclusions to all of this? Um, in this sort of very deep dive, I've, I think it can be conclusively sort of said that this character doesn't suffer from split scaling. And if someone claims otherwise, then just show them the numbers, show them the video. Everything here is transparent. I'm not trying to hide anything. I'm not trying to sneak in anything that would otherwise skew the results or the arguments in my favor. I'm just doing the raw mathematics, which you can check and verify for yourself.